So if you saw my last video, you'll know that I have recently released my first game on Steam and actually it's pretty much been just about a year since I started developing it part time or since I came up with the idea for it. So I wanted to use this video as an opportunity to do a bit of a devlog on that game and tell you how I made it. Let's go. Hello everybody, my name is Cuba and I make games. If you missed it before, the most recent game that I've made is a game called Tilelands. It came out on Steam about three months ago now, on uh, the 1st of November 2023. I did make a video previously talking about all of the sales stats at the time a month ago when that video went up which you can click the button up in the corner or check the link in the description to have a look at that uh since then the stats have changed a lot i don't know what it's at, at the top of my head i'll put a screenshot on the video here but we're now at about 1.2k sales with a net revenue of like 3.2k which is really cool that is in large part to a video which was made by real civil engineer um obviously you know his channel is 2 million subscribers or something crazy so that's that was huge i was really really gassed about that um and you know i can talk a little bit more about how that happened if you're interested let me know in the comments and i'll maybe make another video on it but that's not what we're here to talk about in the last video i made the mistake of not putting any visuals of the game at all so i wanted to use this video as like i said in the intro a devlog to talk about how i came up with the game what it looked like before how it evolved over time and where it's going to go in the future so let's rewind the clock and talk about the origin of tilelands so it was winter 2022, December, coming into January 2023. I had just finished partaking in the Christmas Jam Gam with my good collection of friends on Discord and I was looking to start a new project. I had this idea in my head for what if I could merge Tetris with Tile Tale by Sock Pop. I wanted to take that concept, merge it with Tetris and with Islanders such that you have a deck of cards which define a shape like a tetronomo tetronomo polyomino tetris shape you then also have the type of tile that would be in that shape and you can place that onto a grid and when you complete a line it gives you points for all of those things that you've placed based on the tiles that are around them and i was like cool this sounds interesting gonna prototype it and i originally came up with this 3d concept um which I quite like the aesthetic of, and it was it was pretty interesting feeling. But I couldn't I couldn't quite get what the loop was going to be or how to make it interesting, how to get everything pieced together nicely. So I kind of shelved it for a while, stepped away from it until come around this time last year, February 2023, 2023, when I started rebuilding the prototype, but in 2D. So this was actually an experiment which kind of started out from the back of trying to build a spring controller for the sake of game feel. And I was using the same concept because I still wanted to work with this Tetris idea. And I had these little springy bits that I could move around. And you can already see from this GIF that it's looking a lot more like how the game looks now. Um, and that, that iteration was pretty quick as you'll see as we get further, but I was now, I still didn't have a loop. I was still trying to figure out a way that I could make this Tetris style mechanic work. But thinking about it at the time, I wanted to put this game onto mobile and I just couldn't think of a way to make the user experience smooth. So I ended up ditching the concept of Tetris and moving instead to just individual tiles, really leaning into the Islander style mechanic of relational, adjacency rules and having it just that you have a deck of tiles you play one tile from the top of that deck and it will give you points based on the tiles around it and this is where Thailand's was born really i quickly started iterating from there thinking about adding in new tiles and how to really firm up that loop so originally the loop actually entailed scoring points to a threshold and then getting to pick from a collection of packs very similar to islanders where i was coming up with things like you know there was the farming pack the nature pack the industry pack and having specific tiles related around that and that was kind of a cool concept but i think i ended up ditching it at some point just to do with how balancing felt and 
off the back of that also introducing the idea of merge rules because they weren't originally in the game. So as I say, the original concept revolved around just this idea of placing tiles down, having adjacency rules and nothing else really happening around that. I then wanted to put in something similar to Dorf Romantic where you have this concept of quests and they're actually still called quests in the codebase for Tilelands, but they more behave like uh, entities or um, like board characters or something more like an additional layer on top of the base tiles that gives you some more extended interaction with things that can go into the game. The best example of this is definitely the worker or the villager which spawns from villages and can be used to upgrade tiles and this was an extension of the monument which was created very early on as an object that you can right click on to activate and will steal tiles from around it and do something. Originally those activation rules were actually a automatic thing and it would just be the case that when that condition is met the tile would activate and the monument was, if it was surrounded, it would destroy all of those surrounding tiles and score points equal to the sum of them. But this felt way too overpowered and also didn't lean into the main objective that I wanted from the game, which was the player being able to build up their own little town. It was like a minimalist city builder type vision that I had. So the idea of having something that just without your say completely destroys the town that you've built, that, that wasn't a good feature. <laughs> so I made it optional and you could choose to destroy the town that you've built to gain more points to continue playing for longer. So looping back from that, that gave birth to things like the quests as an additional loop with the worker coming in being able to have it move around the board, right click on it to upgrade things. And that then gave birth to the idea of merge rules. And that was really where I, I finally had latched onto, right, this is, this is the cool thing that makes the game a little bit different to what else is on the market in this genre. So from that, it was really quick iteration, really. I had ditched the hacks idea, like I said, because I wanted to focus on the merging as the main progression mechanic, such that you start off with this base set of like 10 random tiles that you can draw as you level up randomly. And then you're going to place them all down in configurations to meet these merge rules and progress from there with the idea that stuff could merge into something and those things can merge into something else. You get this really nice cascading effect where you can build up little engines that will generate more tiles to keep your scores getting bigger and that was really cool. So a lot of the progression after that was really just adding in some visual polish, adding in the final balancing and working on the art direction with Adele, my girlfriend, who is also like the pseudo graphics marketing expert in the studio. So that's that's where everything went from there and it evolved quite quickly over the course of these next clips. Um, where it went from being this very plain, flat, grey background, weirdly laid out mess that I had made originally, to this nice, kind of more fun, colourful, interesting experience that was a lot nicer to interact with, if I do say so myself. <laughs> so that's kind of a quick rundown of what Tilelands was, how it became what it is now. Let's talk about where it's going next. So one of the biggest things that people have asked for is the ability to save runs and be able to come back to them later. That is something that I wanted to have in the original release, but we just couldn't quite lock it down on the original timescale that I'd set for myself. It's been pushed by the wayside, but it is scheduled for 2.0. We also have a whole bunch of new tiles that we want to introduce. There's like various different things that have been suggested by the community that I want to put in. Things like roads, markets, extra generational tiles, lots more fun stuff that I'm going to introduce to the game to add deeper mechanics and also improve the abilities of late game tiles like the temple and oil rigs, which currently aren't particularly helpful. They just score you a high number of points when they're created but don't do anything following that so more incentive to make those useful. There's also plans to add in support for different tile cosmetics which won't be DLC they'll be completely free unlockable in game and I want to hear your ideas for what you think those should be which leads me on to the next exciting thing. We have a new discord server. Woo! Anyone who's been following the channel for a while knows that we did have a discord server originally but because my posting is terrible I let it die and go to waste and eventually I archived it with the promise of a new server coming 
and that day is finally here. There's a link in the description to join and you'll be able to leave suggestions, feedback and also get early access to new beta versions of the games that we develop through that. So if you're interested in being involved in the community, getting help with your own games, playing out early versions of our game that we've currently got, check that out, join the community, come say hi. I'm hoping that I'll be able to keep it a bit more active <laughs> than I did the last one. So watch this space. And that about brings us up to the end of the video. I'm planning to have the new release for Tirelands end of March is what I've got penciled in. Uh, there's a lot to do by then, so I may end up pushing it back. But like I say, keep a check on the Discord server for updates. I'll be posting GIFs and questions for people in there so I can get feedback from you guys and really see what direction we can be taking this game in. I've also started working on the next game I want to release on Steam and there's a lot more exciting updates to come in terms of the structure of the studio, new people coming on board and the type of things that we're going to be doing in future. So keep your eyes peeled for new videos coming out very very soon on that new game, other new games, new people in the studio, lots of exciting stuff. There's a website in the works, I, yeah I can't wait. But that's been all I wanted to put in this video, if you liked it feel free to subscribe. Like I say, join the Discord server and I will see you in the next one. Cheers guys.